where we will be doing an introduction to layer management in AutoCAD 2017. And we're all happy to um, have you joining us today. And hopefully we'll make this a good experience for you here. All right, a little bit about us. And we are starting off with a great awkward moment here. We will uh, take a moment here just to fix that. For some reason, our PowerPoint is not working as expected. So a little bit about ourselves. Uh, first of all, Zach Travis and myself, Volker Coco, we're going to be uh, presenting this particular webinar. And Bryce Thielen will be moderating, so answering any questions as we go through the webinar. One moment here, and I will hopefully fix our problems. And that is not working, so please bear with me one moment. And I paused it. I'm going off of that screen. Okay, hey, we're back. Uh, so here we are, build your AutoCAD IQ. And we'll begin again just by talking a little bit about who we are. And um, Zach Travis will be uh, presenting. He's our one of our technical support specialists, one of my colleagues here in the Lake Oswego, Oregon office. In fact, he had the entire, not the entire, but we have a chunk of the uh, Lake Oswego team here today. So uh, my name is Volker Coco. I'm also a technical support specialist uh, with the AutoCAD products. And then we have Bryce Thielen. Um, so you may notice we don't really have a picture for Bryce. We really don't know what he looks like. Okay, so we just decided to plop a picture there onto the screen, give you a little bit of puppy love for this particular webinar. One day we will discover who that man is. So before we get started, hey, feel free to leave uh, questions in the chat window. Bryce will be more than happy to answer those, as, as will Zach or I, whoever's not talking at the time. The session will be recorded. It's going to be available on our YouTube channel. Uh, those links to the recording, as well as the data set after, uh, which we'll make available after this webinar, uh, the links for all of that uh, are in your reminder uh, email that was sent to you about an hour ago. And I do apologize uh, for yesterday's reminder, which had last week's webinar on it. Uh, this one is back to basics layer management. Okay, so I do apologize about that one. It happened. It's happened before. Hopefully it won't happen again. Uh, and let's talk a little bit about our Autodesk Help webinar series. Okay, build your AutoCAD IQ. We actually have four tracks, and some of the upcoming topics are working with the Action Recorder. That is coming up in April next month, one week from now. <laughs> and that is in our Beyond the Basics track. That's followed a week later by the third dimension, which is all about 3D, 2D to 3D workflows in AutoCAD 2017. Then we'll have a uh, AutoCAD 2017 Tips and Tricks webinar. And that, of course, continues on to another Back to Basics class. So those four tracks. And uh, depending on your uh, skill set, you may want to uh, make sure you grab the right track. Uh, those, again, are available on YouTube, and you can sign up on our landing page, uh, which, uh, or if you would, you've obviously already signed up, but if you have colleagues who want to join us, have them go to our landing page, and you can provide that link um, to them, either from the email or later on if you download this uh, PowerPoint slide. Just pass that on to your friends, colleagues, loved ones, puppies, cats. All right. One thing we always like to point out here is the Autodesk Knowledge Network. We are product support. That's who we are when we present this. Uh, we try to throw in uh, a little bit of beware of this, gotcha on that, and 
you know, just um, kind of keep an eye out for things that we try to point out other than learning how to use the tools. Uh, the best place to get additional resources, or one of the best places, is the Autodesk Knowledge Network. You can find resources for getting started with the application, regardless of which one you're working with. Uh, uh, get some learning resources there. Find downloads for uh, updates to the application, such as service packs or hotfixes, uh, language packs, object enablers. Yeah. And then we also have information on troubleshooting documents, which we write, which uh, the developers write. Um, just information about uh, how to troubleshoot and um, uh, even things that aren't troubleshooting that you may uh, have, have a problem understanding or may not quite understand, we try to clarify. There's some quick links because this is primarily tailored for, for AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT users. I've provided uh, quick links to the downloads and uh, page for those two applications. Uh, so that said, everything we do in this uh, uh, webinar series, we try to tailor to AutoCAD LT and AutoCAD. It is, everything is applicable to the verticals for the most part, okay? There may be some things that, uh, well, there are a lot of things that can be done in different ways in the verticals, but um, uh, everything you can do in AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT one point or another, you can do it in the verticals because they can be used as AutoCAD. Uh, if the tools are not available in AutoCAD LT, we do try to point that out. Okay, it is a lighter version of the AutoCAD um, based software. All right, so talking a little bit about this week's agenda, and that includes what layers are. Okay, it's about layer management. So what are layers? Talk about that a little bit here in a moment. Uh, we'll show you how uh, the layer properties work, what can be assigned to those, and how to create and modify your layers. Uh, we'll talk about layer states, uh, and that is saving the state of the layer properties at one time or another, or what layers are available. We'll talk about how we can override layers. And as far as noteworthy tools go, some of the um, functions that have been added in the last couple of releases uh, to automate uh, tasks in AutoCAD, as well as some other, uh, hopefully, tips and tricks that we can throw in there. Actually, let's go back one bit. I want to throw out a couple of polls here. For those of you who've been here, you've been through this, I know that. Um, but we're going to ask again because we know we do have some, or hopefully we have some new users. Hopefully we have some repeat uh, users as well, come to think of it. <laughs> I'm taking things for granted here. Okay, so right now i um, throwing this poll out uh, with about 15 more seconds to go. It looks like we have 93% uh, attendees at this time who have are returning and 7% new. Um, so I do appreciate those who are returning. It's always good to see you back. We have come to know quite a few of you. And of course, it's really good to see new users uh, or viewers of these webinars attending. So. Um, uh, Thank you for both parties. All right, we'll go ahead and hide that one. We're only gonna have three polls today. Uh, the second one here is to see which application, CAD application you are using. Uh, we do this to make sure that we tailor the content properly. Like I said, most of these webinars are uh, based um, uh, tailored toward AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT. Uh, we will be, we've already had one on AutoCAD architecture, but we'll be uh, throwing more vertical um, webinars out there as well. So always a good thing to know who is um, showing up here. So let's close that one and kind of give you the results there. 
Kind of? No, I am giving you the results. 38% uh, with AutoCAD, 30% AutoCAD LT, that's about normal, and actually all these numbers uh, pretty much add up. Uh, usually there's one or two others, okay? It's always a mystery what that other is. Um, I'm sure it's something to get your work done, though. All right, so that'll be it for polls right now, and we will actually get on to the show here. Yes. All right. So, uh, having said that, let's talk a little bit about layers. Um, and, and I do want to state, this is a back-to-basics class. So, there is going to be a lot of very basic stuff here. Okay? And um, the first thing we want to talk about, oh, let's see, do we still have the polls showing? Yeah, we do. Boy, that's um, kind of second awkward moment of the day. <laughs> I'm glad most of you are familiar with me um, to some extent. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about layers. Uh, think of layers. What are they? Well, think of them as a sheet of paper, okay? So if you've done board drafting, uh, which is where we used to draw on paper, as opposed to electronic media. I know it's, uh, it's uh, hard to believe, isn't it? Um, yeah, think of it as a, a layer as a sheet of paper. Okay, so in board drafting, you'd have something like vellum, which is pretty much transparent paper. And instead of drawing your entire project on one sheet of paper, which m would make it hard to maybe distinguish between electrical and plumbing or uh, furnishing, I don't need to see furnishing, okay? Uh, I don't want it to be on that sh same sheet of paper as the electrical and plumbing. Um, uh, there are two different purposes, one's for presentation, one's for building. So um, we had different sheets of paper and we could lay one on top of the other. One would have a floor plan, one would have a foundation, one would have electrical, plumbing, and, and so forth, okay? well. Layers in AutoCAD work the same way, except that we can have 32,767 of these. Um, let's not go overboard on that, okay? That is the upper limit. Um, and actually, um, AutoCAD creates two of those. One is layer zero, and the other one is called layer def points. Um, it's not uncommon to see several hundred layers in a drawing. But again, I, I, I wouldn't try and, you know, fill up the maximum there. I think you'd be annoying a few people. So layer zero is added by AutoCAD by default. It's in every drawing. It's it's a layer that you're not going to be able to, to delete. You're not going to be able to rename it. AutoCAD needs it. It's Think of it as the skeleton on a human body. Okay? We need it. We can't live without it, really. Okay, so layer zero is um, the foundation for all the other layers out there. Layer def points is also created by AutoCAD when placing a dimension in the drawing. A user can create layer def points, and it will work exactly the same way. And the, um, the fact being that it is a no plot layer. Anything placed on that layer will not be plotted. And I'll explain a little later why this layer was created in the first place. All right, so layer names can have up to 255 characters. Uh, let's not go hog wild with that. I would recommend, I mean, do it. I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm just saying you shouldn't. Um, we have things which are called XREFs, where we can reference other files. Those files have a file name as well as a layer name, which are then inserted into the AutoCAD drawing, extending whatever layer name you have. So um, the layer names can get fairly lengthy on their own. Uh, there are actually um, CAD standards out there, national CAD standards, AIA standard, um, a couple other standards, for some reason they're not rolling off my tongue, uh, that have great layer naming conventions. Uh, in the last slide of this PowerPoint, uh, I have a um, uh, resource slide which actually will, uh, has a link to it to the uh, AIA standards, so you could check those out if you don't have your own standards in place already. And a lot of uh, smaller shops or uh, individual users, you know, for the most part, they tend to, to work with uh, um, 
other companies' standards. You know, the bigger company typically um, has the power over what the standards are, or the bigger organization, I should say, or it could be vice versa. Don't let me tell you who's the boss, okay? Uh, letters, number, spaces, and uh, spe there are sp special characters that can be used in layer names, um, but they, uh, the special characters that I've listed in this particular um, slide, you cannot use those, okay? If you, um, AutoCAD doesn't even let you create those from what I recall. Um, some special characters I do know will cause problems. So I, I try to stay away from calling a layer 1.0, okay? I don't even put an underscore in front of a layer name. And I, I do see stuff like that all the time. Uh, I would still probably stay away from it myself. Um, layer lists are sorted alphanumerically. Okay, any special characters, of course, are going to be placed in front, just like any other list order. All right, so some other things about layers, and we'll be demonstrating this. Um, we assign properties to uh, objects. I'm, I'm not sure why I have the word objects in there. Really, we, we can assign properties to objects, but we can also assign those to layers. Yeah, so if we assign a color, a line type, or a line weight to a layer, then once an object is placed on that layer, the object being text, line work, circles, blocks, whatever, they will inherit the properties of that layer. So anything placed on a layer, color red, uh, with a line type of hidden, uh, with a line weight of 0 0.30 millimeters, that's the properties they would uh, inherit. Layers can, um, uh, we can control the display of those objects on a given layer by freezing or thawing or turning on or off. There's a difference between those two, uh, which we'll talk about later. Um, <laughs> Control weather layer plots. I'm sorry, I had to laugh at um, my own spelling there. <laughs> we can control the weather along <laughs> as well as how a layer plots. Um, so we will see about fixing that spelling error. But uh, hey, you can create layers where um, it has a top, anything placed on a layer. You can switch to having it not plot or plot. Um, pretty nice functionality. And we can also lock or unlock a layer, which allows us to um, play, create new objects on a layer, but not modify those objects after the fact. Okay, so that being said, let's see how all this stuff works. And I need to end my show here. So. Okay. Uh, not right now. Yeah, things aren't happening for me today. All right. Okay, so I have three drawings up here. Layer zero drawing, the one you see, um, which should refresh here in a moment. Hopefully. Um, let's see what we can do about that. If it's not, not uh, just not happening today, are they? All right. Okay. So we should be seeing that now. Awesome. Um, layers, uh, we have three drawings open here in AutoCAD 2017. Layer zero drawing, the one you're seeing active right now, just for your own information, it's just a drawing template started from scratch. So nothing uh, fancy about it, but um, uh, we will use it for demonstration purposes here. So first of all, let's talk about where we can find our layer uh, commands. First of all, I can, like in anything else, I can type the command at, a, at the command prompt uh, to get me into the layer uh, properties dialog or um, type in a given command for any of uh, the layer tools, which are found on the home tab of the river, ribbon. So up here we have the layer properties palette, uh, manager palette. I'll open that up in a moment. This, um, I just call it a layer drop-down control because that's basically what it is. And it will show me all available layers in a drawing. And remember, layer zero is the default uh, drawing you're always going to have. 
we have some additional tools here uh, that allow us to manipulate uh, layers. I'm not going to be using any of these really in this webinar. We'll be doing a follow-up uh, webinar getting into some of the um, other layer tools that we have available in AutoCAD. Some of these we may touch on today, but uh, for the most part, um, we'll leave these alone. Note that we have a slide out panel here. Zach will actually be talking about layer states uh, shortly. And of course, we can manipulate layers in the properties palette. Okay, so right now I have nothing selected, nothing in the drawing, but it's telling me here that uh, colors right now are assigned by layer, which basically means that, uh, as I explained earlier, if I place something on a layer, it's going to inherit the properties of that layer. Layer zero, everything is a default. You know, it has a color of white. Uh, the layer name is zero, uh, line type is continuous, line weight is the default 0.25 millimeter or 0 0.010 inches, whichever you prefer to use. Okay, so having said that, let's take a look at the layer property manager, uh, property palette manager. Okay, and this is where we can create a lot of our layers because uh, we can also create them from the command prompt. Um, just take a look at what's going on here. On the far left, uh, we can create filters for the layers. It you know, allows us to manage numerous layers based on color, uh, any properties in a layer, or even by uh, an object, uh, depending on how we create those. Those will be covered later uh, in, in a later edition. Uh, we can create the new property filters, work with the existing ones, but these are the tools we want to focus on here. This tool allows me to create a new layer. Alt plus N will allow me to do that, along with other functionality. Here we can freeze a layer and make it visible in model space, but freeze it in any paper space viewport Okay, in, in your layout. Here we can delete a layer. Now, layers can only be deleted if nothing is referencing them. If any object is on them, uh, not going to be able to uh, delete it. If it's current, you're not going to be able to delete it. If it's frozen, or uh, you're not going to be able to delete it. This tool here allows me to set a layer current. When I set a layer current, that means I can draw on top of it. Anything I draw will be placed on that layer, that sheet of paper. In this column here, we see the layer name. Um, then we have the tools to allow us to manipulate a layer. So uh, you can expand these quite a bit here. And I'll talk more about this in a moment. Our palettes, we can manipulate as well. This is like any other palette. So just be aware, we can keep this open at all times. We can anchor it left if we choose to do so and it'll pop out there, or we can keep it floating. So all how you want to work with it. We can put it into an auto-hide mode to where it's available, but if but my cursor is over it, it becomes available. So hidden and available, all right? OK, so first thing I'm going to do is create a new layer here. And I am. Just going to go ahead and click on this icon right here. And I'm going to create a layer called, uh, what are we calling it, exterior. Okay, And I'm just going to type exterior. And then I'm going to type a comma. And notice how it jumps from layer exterior to another layer one. All right, so this one I'll call interior. The comma allows me to create that uh, another layer uh, quickly. I'm going to assign, here's on and off and freeze, I'm going to assign a color to these two layers. Uh, I'm going to make uh, layer interior red. Whoops, it's an auto hide mode. I'm going to make exterior, well, we'll make it cyan, why not? It's nothing like what I have written in the script, but um, I may, 
just kind of throwing those colors out there. So we can easily select colors from the color palette, true type colors, um, uh, or just the AutoCAD color index, which is limited to 255 colors. All right. So line types work a little differently here. Okay, uh, if I click on this continuous, you'll see it's the only line type in the drawing. I actually have to load these from a text file. The text file itself has not only standard uh, imperial unit line types in it, it also has metric line types. That's what these AKAD ISO ones are. Don't mix and match these light line types. If you're going to work with metric drawings, use the AKAD ISO. In fact, there's a uh, complete AKAD ISO line type file. Uh, if you're going to work with the Imperial, then I'd uh, really recommend working with Imperial unit line types. I'm going to load center because I'm going to create another layer in a moment. And I'm going to go ahead and load hidden. I held down on the control key to select both of those. You can use control or shift to select just like in any other um, selection dialog except for the browse box. Um, I'll click OK. Now this adds the line type to the drawing, but it does not apply it to, um, to a given layer. Okay, I need to select that line type to apply it to a given layer. Now I do have the wrong layer selected, so I'm just going to go ahead and click OK right now and we'll change that in a moment, but here it's hidden. To change it back, well, I'm just gonna put it on continuous here. Let's go ahead and put the um, uh, red or interior layer, we'll make that a hidden layer. And now, while this layer is selected, I'm gonna go ahead and create new layer. And notice that the new layer is created with the same properties from the layer that I selected. So if you're going to create multiple ones, maybe you want to um, select layer zero um, or whatever. I'm just throwing that out there. I'm going to call this one center. I'm going to change the color here to red uh, uh, magenta because we're going to show it in paper space later. And yellow doesn't show up very well in paper space on white. I'm going to go ahead and put the center uh, line type on this. And I should probably change this one back on the continuous, on layer zero. There we go. All right. So I've created some layers here. I'm going to go ahead and um, make the exterior layer. I'm going to set a current. All I did was right click on it. But I can also, uh, excuse me, double click that layer to make it current. Um, I can also right click over it. And set it current that way, I can create new layers. All the options that we see in the icons here are pretty much available in this right mouse click menu, plus more. All right, so having done that, I am now, um, I've made layer exterior current. I'm gonna go ahead and just close this here for a moment. And I'm gonna draw a circle, because now what I wanna talk about are the differences between having a layer turned on or off, and, or, or um, excuse me, that's pretty easy to tell, actually, on or off, but uh, how about between off and frozen, what the difference is there, okay? Uh, as, as well as we'll talk about locking a layer. So, what I'm gonna do is draw a circle right now, and I'm just using the command prompt, the circle command is on the draw menu. I'm gonna go ahead and Type in a value here of, say, um, make it four units. Okay, so there's my four unit circle. I'm going to repeat the command by hitting enter, and um, I'll use the same point um, uh, that I used previously. In order to do that, I'm going to use the at symbol, and this circle will have a radius of two, just for grins. Okay, so um, first thing I want to do is I actually wanted this to be called uh, an interior object on the interior layer. I screwed up. I drew it all on one layer. Okay, I'm going to select this and either from the drop down control up here or from the property palette, I can place that object 
on the layer that I actually wanted it to appear on. Okay, so now if I select this, see how if I select this, it tells me it's on layer interior. If I select both of these, it says, well, <laughs> I don't know. I can only show you one, all right? But it's a great tool to verify what layer things are placed on. Okay. By making layer center current, right now I'm just doing that from this drop-down control, I'm going to go ahead and draw uh, a couple of center lines, appropriate for a center layer. I'll just use uh, O-Track here, and uh, it's just a way of referencing center. You can draw a straight line if you wanted to, but I'm just going to draw a line six, uh, start at six units from the center of that circle, point straight down, and type 12, enter. I'm, if you're not familiar with O-Track, don't worry about it. However you want to draw a center line, that works. I'm assuming you know some of the commands in AutoCAD here. Um, I'm going to use the rotate command now, which of course I can find up here on the modify command, um, uh, tab. I typed RO and I'm going to select the center here. I'm going to right mouse click and say I want to make a copy of this and I'm just going to go ahead and place that in there like that. Okay. So, if I zoom to extents, this is the extents of my drawing, right? Layer states right now are as they should be. Everything's in a normal mode. I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate on and off right now. Uh, first of all, I'll go ahead and turn off layer zero, or center, I'm sorry, layer center. And actually, I can do that. I'm going to keep the current layer on. I did mean to put this on layer zero right now. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and turn off layer center. Okay, great. So we have this gap here. And if I zoom out and then zoom to extents, I still have this gap here because those objects are there, correct? Okay, just agree with me. Uh, trust me, they are. All right. Um, if I were to turn that on, obviously we'd see those line, that line work. What I'm going to go ahead and do now, though, is I'm going to freeze that layer. And that's what the little sun icon is. And it's going to change to a snowflake. All right. And I'm zooming out. If I zoom to extents, note how that gap we had with the off function is not there. That's because turning off a layer is like turning off the lights in a room. Okay? You're still going to bump into the furniture. Okay? Um, freezing a layer is like the lights being off and while you were at work somebody had removed all your furniture and you're walking into the room. You're not going to bump into anything. It's been removed from the data set. So that's the difference between on and off. Or on and off, I keep doing that, uh, between frozen and turned off. All right, so all our stuff reappears. If you were to do a select all erase, um, you would not be removing anything on a frozen layer. One action item before I turn this over to Zach is the lock function. Okay, so um, I'm, I'm just going to make layer center. I'm picking on layer center. Okay, it's now been in a lock mode. And you may have noticed that the center lines themselves faded a bit. Okay, that's because of a um, control we have, a locked layer fade. Okay, so we can, we can change this. We can manipulate this. We can make it better or worse or normal, whatever we want to do. All right, so with a layer locked, I can, and I'll go, do this the way I should be from the ribbon. I can reference the objects on that lock layer. Notice the little lock icon though, okay? So I'm referencing that, referencing that. Okay, that works great. Oops, I'm still on layer zero. Okay, yeah. So I can reference those objects. I'm gonna go ahead and set it to layer. Oops, selected a color. I'm gonna set it to layer center now. There we go. And let's do this with the intent that I originally had. 
All right. Reference my objects, whatever. There we go. Let's go ahead and just draw some other stuff. Doesn't matter. All this stuff, even though I was able to create this, I it looks selected, right? If I now go to the erase command, it's not going to happen. And it tells you on the command line, two items were on a locked layer. So it's not letting me get rid of those. I can do this. It erases everything else. If I want to move this stuff, okay, note AutoCAD is still prompting me to, to select those objects. Five were on a locked layer. So it's not, it's really not going to let me do anything. So a lock layer means I can reference this stuff. It's a great way to make sure you don't accidentally mess something up. And it allows you to, uh, to work. So hopefully that helps a little. I'm turning this over to Zach now, just because he's over here going, Volker, we're running out of time. We're running out of time. Greetings, everybody, uh, indeed. Uh, Moving right along here, we're going to move on to a couple of the other sample drawings from our set. We're going to start off with the floor plan layer one. And one of the things that Voker likes to do, and I'll show you how to do right now, is to, you notice that the, the layers tab the layers panel on the ribbon is only on the home ribbon tab uh, so you might be you know placing uh, dimensions or doing other things you might be on a different ribbon tab so sometimes it's handy to have this pull down up here for ribbon uh, for layers up in the quick access toolbar so the way to do that and with any of the controls you have on the ribbon you can add any of these controls to your quick access toolbar up here at top left is you can right click and say add to the quick access toolbar and as you can see up there, now I've got the ability to pull down here, access my ribbon control or layer control without necessarily having the layer properties manager open at the time and without being on the home tab in the ribbon. So say I'm on the annotate tab now. I can still hit the pull down. I can still see my layer controls here even though I'm not on the home ribbon tab. So that's just handy sometimes. Uh, that might be helpful for you to know how to put that up there or any other controls you know, right click them, add to quick access toolbar, then it'll be up top. So moving on, what we're going to do here, you can see the sample drawing, and if I select all the objects, and I look over at my properties palette over the left here, you can see that everything, all 4,422 of these objects are on the zero layer. Now, you may have intended to do that, you may not have intended to do that, but for the purposes of, of organization of your drawings, it's often recommended, and it's pretty much general practice, to put specific things on specific layers, like furniture on the furniture layer, or or electrical conduit on electrical layer, and so on. So I'll just show you quickly here about a couple ways to switch things to by layer to a layer, so they inherit their properties from the specific layers. So for example, we've got chairs uh, in these desks here, as you can see right here. Here's one and it's a block, and it's called Chair 7, as you can see over here. So what I want to do is I want to pick all the Chair 7s, and I want to put them on a different layer. So I'm going to use the Quick Select up here. I'm going to say I want a block reference whose name equals Chair 7, and I want to include them all into a new selection set. So I'll hit OK here, and it won't work the way I want it to because I already had one selected. So let's do that again, shall we? With nothing selected, go to Quick Select, go into Block Reference, and I want to say a block reference whose name is Chair 7. Now, as you can see, there are all of the Chair 7 blocks in this drawing have been selected. So I'm going to use the, actually, I'm just going to use the layer pull down up here from the very top that I put in the Quick Access Toolbar. And I'm going to put these on to the, oh, I don't know, I can't remember which layer I want these on. How about Chairs? That makes sense, right? Let's go to the Chairs layer. So now all of these objects, if I pick one, I pick two, I pick three, you can see they're all that block called chair seven, they're all now on the chairs layer, and they've all inherited the color of 
the chair's layer by the virtue of their property, their color property is set to by layer. So they've all inherited that. So that's good. Uh, we can do it again with, uh, say, all these doors. We do a, we'll do a select similar. And we'll pick one of these door objects. And we'll enter that. So it'll pick any object that looks like a single swinging door like that. And we'll use our layer pull down up here from the quick access toolbar again. And we'll put these on the, uh, put these on the door layer. It happens to be green. So you can see visually that these objects are all on now on that layer. So by, by placing the objects on the different layers, it really allows you to, to better organize and control the objects within your drawing. So next we'll move on to uh, one of the other drawings in our, in our set, and that is this guy over here. That's another floor plan, as you can see there. We've got lots of stuff on different layers. And this is a much better organized uh, drawing in, in that respect because all these different object types are on different object layers specifically with that purpose. So let's say we wanted to uh, change the color of a particular, all the objects on a particular layer. Uh, so let's say like, uh, uh, let's pick this guy here. Uh, it's on the panels 201 layer. Okay, so let's change the color of panels 201 and we'll use the layer property manager this time to do it. Uh, let's see. There it is right there. We'll change this from magenta, and let's say we want to make it color 140. We'll just clear all this out. 140, we'll hit OK. There we are. And as you can see there, the majority of the stuff changed to this blue color that we've made it. But you also notice that this object here, as you can see, its color is set to magenta and its layer is panels 201. So it's on the same layer, but it didn't change. Why didn't it change? The reason it didn't change is because its color setting, as you can see in the properties palette here and in a second ago in the, in the uh, tooltip, the color is not set to by layer. The color is set specifically on a per object basis for these uh, several panels here. And again, you may want to do that on purpose, or you may not want to on, do that on purpose, but uh, for the purpose of this demo, what we'd like to do is we want to take all these objects that are on this particular layer, this panels 201 layer, we want to make them all set to their color by layer. So again, we can use our quick select tool, and we'll say all objects, multiple objects. We don't care what kind of objects they are, as long as they're on layer, panels 201. That will select every object on that layer, as you can see there. Now the color setting varies because we know some of them are set to get their color by layer, some of them are set to get their color, specifically are set to a specific color. We want them all to get their color by layer though, so that's what we're going to use the, this for here. And as you can see now they've all reverted to using and inheriting their color by the layer, uh, by the color that the layer is set for. So the next thing we wanted to get into is what Volker mentioned previously, which was layer states. Layer states is a snapshot of how all the layers in the drawing are set at that moment in time. And you may get a drawing sent to you, say, uh, from a client, and, and they've got certain layers turned off, certain layers locked, certain layers frozen. Whatever the case, maybe you want to turn them all on and see everything so that you can find what it is you need to do with the drawing. But you need a way to quickly return that drawing to its original state as far as the layers are concerned when you go to send it back to them. So that's where layer states come in really handy. So you can get to layer states in a couple ways. Here's the pull down in the layer panel on the home ribbon tab. So currently, we're in an unsaved layer state. We don't have any layer states in this. This blank area right here is where you would show any layer states if there were any in this drawing. Right now, there aren't any. So we're going to make a new layer state. And maybe we'll call it as received. And if you want to put a description in, you can. It's not entirely necessary, but you have to put in a name. Uh-oh, I have unsupported characters. Did I type in a space, maybe? Yeah, maybe that's what it is. We'll just call it as received. We'll try that. OK, so I like that one. So let's go into Layer Properties Manager. We'll select all the layers, and we will thaw them all. We'll turn them all on. 
I don't think any of them are locked. So now every layer is turned on, every layer is thawed, every layer is unlocked. And that's how we want it so we can do our work and whatnot. But let's say when we've finished up our modifications, our revisions, whatever we're doing, and we're going to send the drawing back to the client, and they don't want to see all the layers turned on. They want to see it how they left it or how they, it was when they sent it to you. So you quickly go back up into your layers pull down. You go into the pull down for layer states, and now you've got this as received one. And even before you click on it, it'll give you a preview of what it's going to look like if you were to click on it. So let's go ahead and click on it. And now all the layers are set back to the state they were in when you receive the drawing from the client and it's ready to ship back to them. Uh, a couple other things you can do with layer states, just real quick here. Uh, you can manage your layer states, and that brings you into the layer states manager not surprising. And one really cool thing you can do with the layer states manager is you can export layer states and import them into other drawings. So if you are the kind of firm that uses the same template with all the same layers for all of your drawings, which are not, that's not uncommon. Uh, exporting and importing layer states is a handy thing to do, so you don't have to go into each and every drawing and set the layers up the exact same way. You just do it in one, you export the layer state, you import the layer state into the other drawings, and you're all set. The other way, just real quick to show you, the other way to get into Layer States Manager is right here on the Layer Properties Manager. This button right here will also throw it up there. And as you can see, the, the keyboard shortcut Alt-S will do it as well. So one other thing we can do with layers as far as the level of control goes is we can set layer properties that are specific to viewports, and I'm going to go ahead and not auto-hide this anymore because I like to have it on all the time, and I'm not going to allow it to dock because I want it floating. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to our layout, and in this layout we have, as you can see here, two different viewports, both showing the model from the model tab. Now, the one on the left, maybe I want it to show as is, but maybe on the one on the right, maybe I only want to show specific content. So what I'm going to do here in this case um, is I'm going to, and, and up in the upper side of your layer property manager, you'll see these, these various controls that say that start with VP. And that means that they're specific to individual viewports. So if I want a particular layer to be a certain color, but only on one particular viewport, I can do that. Or if I want the line type or the line weight of certain layers to be a specific way in a specific viewport only, I can do that. It's very, very uh, detailed level of control you can have here. So what I'm going to do in this viewport on the right, you can see I've got it activated. I'm down here. You see the toggle says model, so I'm in model space now within the viewport. So I'm going to choose the do the furniture layer, and I want to highlight everything on the furniture layer, uh, leave it the same color, and turn everything else gray. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to invert my selection, so it selects all the other layers except for furniture. And then for VP color, I'm going to set, and just choose one of them, I'm going to set them to be this nice gray color. So then you can see what happened here, if we pull in a little closer to our viewport, you can see only the furniture stuff is still colored. Everything else is green. Uh, everything else is gray, rather. Uh, so it's much easier to pick out the objects on the furniture layer. And to undo any of that, also one other thing to, to note here is that if you take a look now at, um, if you're in this, in this model space viewport here, You'll see that some of these, well, all of them except furniture, have a highlighting to them. That would indicate that they've got a, a, an override applied to them, a layer override, a viewport override applied to them. Uh, if you notice, if we go over to the other viewport, model space in the viewport, they don't. All that highlighting goes away because they don't have viewport overrides in this particular viewport. But if we go back to this other viewport, they do. They're still highlighted. That highlight color, in case you're interested, is controlled right here, just in case you want it to be some other color, in case you don't like the light blue. There we go. So there's, so there's your viewport overrides. And, and it even, you know, one other thing is that you can do, when you right-click, you can 
remove viewport overrides specifically for line types or for specifically for colors. Um, you can, you know, like if you apply viewport overrides for both color and line weight or line type, you can undo one or the other and leave the other. So the, the level of control and detail you have here is really kind of astounding. <laughs> um, so that's, that's kind of a quick overview about viewport overrides. One other thing we wanted to mention before we got out of here was that uh, in 2016, if you're in 2016 and 2017, we've introduced a couple of, of new variables and they relate to layers uh, because I know I've, I've been working in, in drawings and, and you'll be on say layer furniture or whatever, but you want to draw a dimension on that object and you may have different layer for your dimensions and you might not want to switch over to the dimensions layer and you, you might forget and you'll draw your dimension on the furniture layer and you meant to put it on the dimension layer. Well, there's a new variable that we introduced with 2016 and I don't have any dimension layers in here as you can see. I don't have one called dimension, but let's say that I want to make a dimension layer. Now I could go into my layer property manager and I can make one called dimensions. But now with this new variable dim layer, I can enter a name for a layer that I want to be used for dimensions. And I can enter a name for a layer that doesn't even exist yet, which is kind of cool. So if I say dimension, boom, done. Now if I go and make a dim linear and I want to start it here and start it here, and if I select this dimension now, we see that the layer it's on is the dimension layer, a layer that didn't exist until just a moment ago when I created this new dimension. Now, in 2016, you had to actually use the dim command and not dim linear, not dim aligned, but the actual dim command in order to make the new dimension layer appear in your drawing. But with 2017, they've cleared that up. It's much better, and it also works the same way for hatches uh, in case you ever wanted to have a specific layer for hatches, hatch objects, we now have the HP layer variable, and we can call it, let's say, hatches, not surprisingly. And I didn't have, and I don't have, a layer called hatches in this drawing now, it should be noted. Press Enter. Now, if I choose my pull down here, I still don't have a layer called hatches, but if I draw on layer zero, just because it has a continuous line type, it makes it a little easier. Let's make a little box, let's draw a little hatch. Let's go hatch from the ribbon right here. We're going to place it inside here, and we'll just leave it all the default settings. Now if I select this hatch, if I look at my hatches pull down from my quick access toolbar, you'll see that it's now on the hatches layer, which until I created this hatch didn't exist. So now any subsequent hatch objects that I create in this drawing will be placed on that hatch layer. So you don't have to actively think about switching layers before placing dimension objects or hatch objects unless you want them on specific other layers. You might have multiple hatch layers or multiple dimension layers. But if you've just got one layer of each, uh, this is uh, certainly a way to go in using those new variables. And 2016, uh, one thing, it, it did add the HP layer, but uh, if, the, if the layer didn't exist already in the drawing and you did HP layer and you typed in the name of the layer you wanted it to create, it wouldn't create it for you. So again, improved in 2017 upon what we started in 2016 with those two variables. So really, they've, they've, they've both come to their full fruition as far as value and usability in 2017. So that's... That's pretty much all I had at this point, so we want to open it up in the last few minutes we have for a couple of questions. Let's see what we've got in here. Uh, uh, there's a which button do you press about the window quick select. So there's a, a button in the upper right hand corner of the properties palette that will get you quick select, as Volker is demonstrating right now. Or you can also type in QSE, which uh, if you don't happen to have the properties palette open all the time, typing QSE might be a quicker shortcut. Or you can type QSelect if you're uh, not in the whole, into the whole brevity thing. And uh, that's, that's a couple different ways you can get to 
quick select. And also, as Boker's pointing out, there's the right click menu gives you the quick select option as well. So many ways to get to the same thing. But the quick select, uh, if you've never used quick select, it is a fantastic feature um, and, and a very good way of selecting only the things you want and none of the things you do. Uh, you can see there you can exclude certain things from it. Let's say you wanted, to, just like we, we inverted the selection in the layer property manager a minute ago and we, and we chose everything except for the one layer, you can do that with object types as well. You could say, you know, I want to choose all the objects that aren't on layer so and so or that aren't a block. I want to only choose the blocks and then uh, invert the selection and it'll choose all the other objects in the drawing at that point. So there are a lot of really nifty controls within Quick Select. So if you haven't, uh, if you haven't used Quick Select uh, before, try it out. It's really a, a powerful tool that it should help expedite and uh, make your drawing more efficient. Uh, Zach, I'm going to interrupt for a moment. We'll take some more questions in a moment. Uh, uh, very few, actually. Sorry about that. But um, I do need to take care of some housekeeping here. And excuse the PowerPoint as it is right now. Um, as I said earlier, we had some problems. This is the uh, resource slide I was talking about. National CAD standards has some additional information about layers, a lot of stuff we didn't cover. And the data set is going to have the script, which we I did not follow. Zach did a good job of ad-libbing as well. Um, but there's more information in there as well, OK? Um, we do want to remind you, uh, feedback is wel welcome. If you do email us using this address, please put in there, build your AutoCAD IQ. Uh, that said, I do have one more poll that I want to run, and then we can try and answer uh, another question or two. So uh, basically, hey, we want to know, and I know a lot of you are like returning users, so I'm really curious, did you learn anything new today? Because if you've been here, it sounds to me like you've used AutoCAD <laughs> quite often. <laughs> and um, Wow, it looks like 92% uh, at this time of you have learned something new, which is uh, really nice to know. 90%, let's call it 90, you know, just to um, just to round it off, um, which uh, it, it did. Uh, it rounded it right off like I asked it to. Hey, that's really great to hear because we hate to waste your time. We know it's, it's valuable. So good stuff there. Um, Zach, uh, probably squeeze in about three more minutes worth of uh, Q and A there. Sure, sure. And uh, and before we go, I I, I wouldn't want to let the hour end without throwing out Laydel. It's my favorite layer related uh, command. So, um, if anybody, uh, Volker talked earlier about the 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 deletion of layers and how you can't delete the zero layer and how you can't delete extra dependent layers. Now you can't delete certain layers that have things on them. Laydel, in most instances. Uh, will break those rules. Uh, in fact, in order to use Laydell or delete, uh, you have to have something on the layer in order to delete it. So we could type Laydell, for example, and it'll say select an object on the layer to delete, like this one here. Well, that's a locked one. We can't do that. Um, how about this one? And well, that one's on layer zero. How about the hatch one? <laughs> we'll do the hatch. Yes. Do we wish to continue? Yes. One layer deleted. We no longer have a hatches layer. So I want to add <laughs> on to that real quick. Uh, think before you do. Yes, absolutely. It, uh, it has far-reaching implications. If you've got anything on those layers, it'll be gone. So it's uh, with great uh, wisdom comes great responsibility. So uh, a couple other questions we have. Uh, somebody pointed out Laydell is dangerous. Yes, it is. Absolutely. <laughs> um, oh, we still have the poll apparently on the screen at the time when we were going yeah. through that. Sorry about that. That's all right. Explore Laydell. It's a it's a nifty feature. When you, when you know there's nothing on there, but it still won't go away for some reason, that's your that's your friend. Draw a line. Pick the line. It's gone. Okay. Uh, what else we've got in here? I'm trying to find any quick quick questions in here. Got just about a minute left. I'm looking for a, a question we can answer in a short amount of time. Um, let's see, is there a way I can create a layer that would be frozen 
in all existing existing viewports. Um, Right, because there is an option to create a frozen layer for all new viewports. The only way you could really do it, I think, would be to just go in there. Um, uh, there is, yeah, there it is. Okay, so Volker's got it on the screen right now. So right, there's new VP freeze, but I think the question was in relation to existing existing viewports that you've already drawn that where the where the layers may not already be frozen, and. Um, you can do VP freeze there, but that's going to be a one viewport at a time basis. So unfortunately, if you've got a bunch of existing viewports already and you want to, say, go into three or four of those viewports and freeze the, freeze the layers in those specific viewports, that'll just be a matter of walking into each one of them and doing it. So I um, hate to cut this short. Uh, it's been a really great presentation, Zach. Uh, Thanks for showing us all that stuff. And everybody, we, we thank you for being here. Thank you for uh, showing up again and um, letting us know that uh, we were able to give you um, some good info. And thank you, Volker, for all your hard work. <laughs> all right, everybody, have a great week. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you next week. As they say in the movies, so long, and thanks for all the fish. <laughs>